In the last video about my dark mystery trailer, I talked about piano and percussion, and now we listen to woodwinds and strings. But first of all, let's listen to the whole track. We start with the woodwinds with a random note staccato pattern by Hollywood Winds. And this one creates a great texture, creating tension. Next, we've got the clarinets, the first and the second one. For this, I use the library Berlin Woodwinds. And what I really love here, that we've got access to all the different instruments. So you can play the first flute, the second, the third, and so on. And they can play unison, or they can play independent melodies or lines. So here, the first and the second clarinets are playing the same thing and they are playing the melody. So they are doubling the strings. Here, the melody is first played by the cello, without the cello. And now just the cello. and both together. We listen to the lower woodwinds. So these are the bassoon and Contrabassoon or something like this, because here I used the library Arian 3 Iceni, and I love to use this library for deep, low woodwinds, strings, and brass. So here we are just playing octaves for the bass. And people ask whether I quantize or don't quantize. You can see this one was played free and I didn't quantize it. So let's add the metronome. And you can see that I played the keys earlier before the hit. So sometimes I'm just doing this by here and by experience and not quantize and after quantizing then move the keys a little bit earlier or later. And next we got a small woodwind tension sound at this part. We listen to the part with this sound and then without. Next, we've got some low woodwinds by Albion 3. I seen again, 
Now we play not the long, we play the short keys. And one special thing about this part, that the bass is not coming at the first hit, we are coming later. And here the woodwind is doubling the brass, so the brass is here. So this is the brass. And what you can see here, the woodwinds always stay at the G. And uh, the bass is playing other keys. So we've got more tension. And here we repeat this one. And at the end, we've got this sound. And let's listen what they are doubling. We've got brass bass. And we've got the strings playing sounds. Now adding the brass. And adding the woodwinds. Now we listen to the strings. We saw the special string sound coming from Evrogit 2 by Spitfire Audio. And for getting more motion, I use the Penman by Sound Toys. And for changing the sound, I used the same method as the choir. I just cut the clips in several parts. Uh, then you can here see the tuning. Here it's minus one. The next part, three up, minus three, zero, and so on. And it works. Let's hear it in context. So here we've got three parts layering. We've got this sound. We've got the piano bass. Let's check it here. And then we've got the woodwinds. Now I introduce the melody with a cello and you can see I always go on with the next higher instrument. So here I go on with the viola, then the second violin and at last the first violin. So let's listen to all these instruments. Okay, so we start with the cello playing this melody. For this one, I used the LA scoring strings. 
the second one I've bought version three, but uh, here I used the second version and I love this direct and this hard sound. It's not lush, it's, it's very hard. So this one is playing the melody and then I add the viola playing a spiccato. So all other instruments are playing long notes, but this one is giving a little drive, a little motor. So then I add the second violin, doubling the cello, but one octave higher. And then at the last part, I add the first violin. And this one is one octave higher. And here you can see all the different voices. And we listen to this part with all instruments. The end is played by long notes, but here I didn't use just the normal echo, I used tremolo. and all the strings and the end now. For the upcoming riser, I used a few string sounds. Now we listen to the whole part. Okay, so what's going on at first? We've got this glissando effects. And at the next part, we've got more going on. At first, we've got one sound coming from Evo Grid 2. And you can hear at the end as getting more spooky. And for this, I used a Melda vibrato. And now let's deactivate it. And now with the plugin, and you can see that it automate three different things. First, the volume, second, the depth, and third, the rate. And next, we got a high jitter or shaker sound. This is the dry version without the plugins. At first, I pitch the sound one octave higher. Here, I use the sound shifter, but instead of this, I could have used the transpose feature inside of Cubase. And this is how it sounds. Next is the Decapitator by Sound Toys. And sometimes I use just low or subtle settings, but here I wanted to hear the saturation. Next is a Tremolo. So this one gives you the shaker effect. And then I used uh, auto pan. And at last, I wanted to reduce the low frequencies. The 
the next part doesn't have any plugins. And the last sound is this. Now we get to the main part. So we start with a cello and it's uh, mixed with two different instruments. At first, we've got the cello spiccato by LA Soaring Strings. And you can ask why this break? Because now it's playing a little run. And uh, this run is coming from orchestral tools, orchestral string runs. I guess it's the first Larry by orchestral tools and I still use it. And I use the strings low spiccato octave patch by Metropolis Arc by orchestral tools. And next, we've got the String Ensemble Cluster by Project Sam. And you can see I didn't play one key. At first, I play four keys and when, uh, then I play five keys. And the next trick is, here you can see the start point is not the same. So I didn't quantize or play them at the same time. Here we've got another starting point and here. So it doesn't always sound the same. And the other thing is that it feels like the strings are playing dream. Now with the whole orchestra. And at the next part, we add a few tension notes. So let's have a look at the key editor. Here you can see the cello is always playing the G. Then we add the D. So that's quite normal. And then we add D flat here d flat or c sharp and d sharp and then we add the same one octave higher and for the next riser i use a few scratch effects and we've got more cluster going on So we have a look in the key editor. You can see the cello is just playing the G and going to F sharp and then G, F sharp and then E. But the rest is playing D sharp, D and C. So we have a look at the viola. The viola is just playing the D. But now comes the strange part. The second violin is sometimes playing D, sometimes, uh, no, this is a D sharp, sometimes C sharp. So it's always different playings between D sharp and C sharp. And now we look at the other instruments. This has uh, the opposite direction. So we listen just to the single instruments. This is just the cello. Boring. Now the viola. But now the second violin. And 
The First One. And both together. For me, it sounds more interesting than all instruments playing just at one key. And now we add the viola and then the cello. And at this part, they go higher. The cello is going up, so they don't move in the same direction. They've got a different direction. And you can see here at the last part, uh, at the, last part the cello is going to E, but the strings, the upper strings are going up and up. In the last part, the first violin is doubling the melody in a higher octave. So here I double the LX corn strings legato. With the LX corn strings tremolo. And when I add it, it sounds more hard or more harsh. Let's hear the full part. The melody is played first with the trombone here. Then it's played by the trumpet. But not just by the trumpet, it's played by the trumpet and the first violin. And at the last note, I added the tremolo played played by the cinematic strings too. And then the soaring strings. Let's add my first violin by Alice Goring strings. Then we've got a tremolo by Alex Soaring Strings playing the viola. And at last, I play the low strings by Metropolis Arc 1 by Orchestral Tools. This was the third part, and the fourth part, we talk about brass, synth, and effects. So when you like this video, please give me a thumb up, it would make me very happy. And when you get some more questions or suggestions, just leave a comment. And when do you would like to look into this project, now you can get this project at my shop. It's a no end project, but you can load this one into Cubase because Cubase can load NPR files. These are the no end files. And when you're working at another door, you can work with a MIDI file. And please appreciate that I couldn't include all the audio files because they are all from third party developers. The link is in the description. See you the next time. Bye.